Okay, so let us prove step one. Okay, what is what we want to prove? F belongs to B implies mod F belongs to. So this is what we want to establish. Okay, so choose an F and B. Let F be an element of B. And what is B? B is the uniform closure of A. So that F is a uniform limit of sequencing name. Okay. Now this implies F is a uniform limit of a sequence or some sequences in A. Now A contains real continuous functions. Okay. Being a uniform limit of a sequence of continuous functions, F also must be continuous. So this implies. So every element in B is continuous. So this is one fact. Remember, we have an algebra containing continuous functions. Then its closure, uniform closure, must contain continuous functions only. Okay. So every element in the uniform closure is also continuous. Now F is continuous means we can find a bound case, f is bound case, f is bound case, that means we can find an a is such that a real number is such that modulus of a from t is less than a for all t in the domain, okay, for all t. Or in other words, minus a less than a for t less than a for all t in k, okay. So we have an interval minus a a where f satisfies, if the range of f is in minus a. Okay, so our aim is to apply Bayes trust theorem in this interval. As we have to prove mod f is in B, we consider the corollary of Bayes trust theorem in which we proved that the modulus function being continuous using Bayes trust theorem, it can be obtained as a uniform limit of polynomial functions. And in particular, we can find the polynomials in such a way that they all vanish at the point zero. Okay, that corollary we discussed. So we find a sequence of what by a coronal to base trust theorem, by base trust theorem and its corollary. And its corollary. There exists a sequence of polynomials Pn such that Pn secures the over Okay, there exists a sequence of polynomials p n such that p n by converts to mod by uniformly. This is uniform convergence. And p n satisfies this and p n x0 is 0. Okay, so that's enough. Okay. We can find a sequence of polynomials p n which vanish at 0 and converging to mod by uniformly. Okay? So this convergence is uniform means we can see that therefore for any epsilon positive, we find an epsilon positive, we can find a tail of that polynomial sequence. After some stage, all the terms in that sequence, that is all polynomial functions in that sequence, the distance between all such functions and mod y function, their norm is less than epsilon. Again, because of the definition of convergence and uniform convergence in particular. Okay. So we can find after some stage every polynomial in the sequence 
are at a distance less than epsilon from the mod modulus of the, from modulus of the. In particular, we can find some polynomial, at least one polynomial we can get, such for epsilon which is positive, there exists a polynomial, we can find a polynomial, say we call the polynomial Ci by x to i, i runs from 1 to 0 to some, the degree of the polynomial we can take as m, such that their distance, that is sigma ci by raised to i minus modulus i is less than epsilon. Okay. This is true for this Western theorem we are applying for uh, scalarly. This is for y in minus a. Okay. Western theorem is uh, stated for an interval, defined for functions defined on an interval. Okay. So if we define y, so this interval we are taking minus a. Okay. Okay, this is true for all y in uniform convergence as features. This is true for every y in minus a. Okay. Now, since f of t lies in this interval, this is true for f t also. For every y in minus a, a, this is true means this is true for f of t also. Because f of t belongs to the interval minus a. a. Since f of t belongs to minus a a, we can replace y by f of t. We have sigma ci f, f of t raised to i minus modulus of f of t. Its norm is less than epsilon. Because every f of t, for all t in k, f of t lies in this series. For all t in k, f of t lies in this interval. For every point in this integral, this is true. So this is true for every t in k. Okay. Now using this idea, we define the function g as g is the sigma c i f raised to i. C1, so we, we have the constant c0, c1, etc. C n. So i from 0 to n. So what is this? C0 plus f raised to 0 is the uh, identity function. C0 i identity function, uh, identity polynomial f raised to 0. C1 f plus C2 f square plus s plus C n f raised to n. This is the function. You can see that if f is in B f square f cube all functions are in B. Okay. So this function, this sum is huh, one more thing you can do here. This part C0 must be 0. That is why we choose Pn at 0 is equal to 0. Pn at 0 is equal to 0 means what? C0 is 0. So you can skip that constant. So this is equal to C1 f plus C2 f square plus etc. This is because C0 is equal to 0. This is, the reason is this as Pn at 0 is 0. So we are choosing polynomial from this sequence. So that same polynomial also satisfies this. At 0 it runs. That is why we restrict on the polynomial satisfying this. Okay? C1 plus. Now you can see that it's a polynomial in B because B is an algebra closed under addition, scalar multiplication and multiplication. So G is an element of B. So what does it say? The, the, this inequality says that we call it 1. Then 1 says that modulus of f of t minus g of t or g of t minus what are saying mod f t modulus of g of t minus mod of t is less than epsilon for all t in k. This implies the distance between g and mod f can be made less than epsilon. Okay. Given any epsilon positive, we can find some g in b satisfying this. This is true for every epsilon positive. That means we can approximate mod f through a sequence of functions. G 
for x not equal to 1 by a, you can choose g n. Okay? You can see this sequence one. So this is enough to get mod f plus b. So that proves r2. Okay, mod f is a number of b. So that proves step 1 that proves. Okay. Now step 2. Somewhere is very simple. Automatic is a very argument that very simple. Just only a realization is required. What is step 2? We have to prove that if f and g are elements of b, then minimum of f g and maximum of f g are elements of or both belong to b. This is what we want to get. This is done by the identity. For proving this we use theorem, step 1. Only for proving step 2 we need step 1. Okay. So, from step 2 we prove step 3 and using step 3 we can prove step 4. This is the idea. So, you can see that if we consider the function for any f and g in b, to look at the function f plus g by 2 plus modulus f minus g is by 2. Look at this function. You can see that this is equal to maximum of f. Similarly, if we look at f plus g by 2 minus mod f minus g by 2, you can see this is same as the minimum of the function f and g. For let us check the first one. What is f of x plus g of x by 2 plus f of x minus g of x is mod f divided by 2. It is equal to, it has choices. What are the choices? We have if the f and g are real value functions, so fx and gx may be lying like this, gx all are positive, fx is greater than or equal to gx or gx is greater than or equal to f of x in positive. Similarly, the both can be negative, fx less than or greater than or equal to gx or gx greater than or equal to fx. Other, other choices is, one is negative and the other one is positive. That means either f x is here, g of x here, or reverse of g of x here, f of x here. Okay, we can we have to check all these possibilities. Suppose this is the case, first case. This is the first case. In that case, what happens? f x all are positive, so modulus f x minus g x. f x minus g x is this distance. And that is same as mod f x minus mod g x or f x minus g x itself. Okay? In, in this case. Okay? So this reduces to f of x plus g of x by 2 plus f of x minus g of x by 2. In the case f x greater than or equal to g of x greater than or equal to 0. In the non-negative both for above 0 and satisfying the same point. Now in the second case what happens, again both are positive, so this difference is g of x minus f x, okay, g of x minus f x is the difference. So this is f of x plus g of x by 2 plus g of x minus f of x by 2. In the case, g of x greater than or equal to f of x greater than or equal to 0. Now if this is the case, what happens? f of x modulus of f x minus d x is this distance and what is that distance? It is f of x minus this, this is this height is f x and this height negative, this is negative this value. So we have to add these two lengths here, okay. So we have to take f of x plus modulus of g x, okay. So here that reduces to f of x plus dx by 2 plus, or we can write down the modulus of f x minus dx, it is f x plus modulus dx. 
modulus g x is minus g x. So this is exactly f x minus g x. Okay. So this is f x minus g x. Okay. In the case f of x greater than or equal to zero and g of x less than or equal to zero. This is the case. Now in the other case we have this is f of x plus g of x by two plus in the case is g of x is greater than or equal to zero, f of x is less than or equal to zero. So in that case again, g x is positive, f x is negative. So the difference is g x minus f x. G of x is minus f of x. You are right. So here what what we get? When we sum up this, we get g x get cancelled. This is f of x. Okay. In this case, it is f of x get cancelled. You are getting it is equal to g of x. Okay. So, and what about this? Again, g x get cancelled. You are getting f of x. And in this case, f of x get cancelled. It is g of x. In all in all the cases, you can see that this is exactly the maximum of. Can write that like this. So this is equal to f of x in the first case, uh, g of x in the second case, f of x in the third case, g of x in the fourth case. And this is exactly maximum of f of x, g of x. Okay, so only I will be doing that. So this function is exactly. Maximum of f g and this function is minimum of f g. So that by step one, what we proved if f is in b, mod f is in b. So f a, f and g are elements of b. F plus g is in g. F plus g is in b. Any scalar multiple is in b. So minus g is in b. So f minus g is in b. Modulus of f minus g is in b. Again, a scalar multiple by one by two. So this function is in b. So that maximum of this is in b. Similarly, minimum is in B. So this is enough. Okay. So to prove the maximum and minimum are in B, this is only to identify these two are these two equations, these two identities. Okay. So we can generalize that we have the sequence of symbols. So if f1 and f2 are elements of B, then Minimum of f1 extra f10 is in B, and maximum of f1 extra f10 is in B. So this goes little more. Okay, not only for two functions, we can extend it for any finite number of functions. So this is the proof of step two. Okay, step three and four we can do in the next video. Next video.